This is the Thursday, November 18th edition of Slow Home Studio. My name is John Brown and this is Matthew North. And in today's online workshop, we have a question from Kelly in Nanaimo, BC. Yes, so Kelly sent us an email and he said that uh, we are in the process of renovating our house and are wondering how you decide what type of flooring to use. Is there some guideline as to which would be a better choice from an environmental point of view? Everything is labeled green in quotes these days and I don't know which would be the best option. Well, that's a good, it's a good question. <laughs> it is there a isn't good question. a simple answer to this at all. Uh, it's that there are a lot of options and you have to weigh, like most environmental, um, environmental decisions, you have to weigh pros and cons from a variety of different, uh, different areas and achieve some kind of a balanced solution that, uh, that, that meets the requirements in your particular location as well as what you're trying to achieve in terms of the way that your house works. Yeah, it's interesting that Kelly brings up a point about everything being labeled green. I think that's a really good point because yeah. if you go anywhere to Home Depot or any carpet supply store or hardwood supply store, every single thing has a stamp that says green. So because they basically can't sell a product now unless it says green on it. So it's become this whole thing of labeling and you have to really be careful. You have to step away from that a little bit and look at some other things. So one thing that we do here in the office is we've got a couple houses that are under construction that are, that are lead, uh, lead for Home Canada candidates and LEED has a guideline, uh, a guidebook that they've put out and there's uh, some really interesting um, things in the guideline and we uh, refer to a table actually that helps us decide what type of flooring to use because LEED rates uh, the different flooring options and gives you different points according to that. So we pulled a copy here of the flooring and uh, for the floor um, they call out specifically linoleum, cork, bamboo, FSC certified or reclaimed wood, sealed concrete, recycled content flooring or any combination of the above. So you get points for choosing those obviously. Um, you also though, if you look a little carefully, you get bonus points if you use all hard surfaces. So if you eliminate the carpet yep. altogether, you get bonus points. And that's something that we're really making an effort to try to do. Now there's, there's really good high quality uh, carpets, uh, you know, 100% wool with jute under pad and all that sort of stuff that you can use that may meet all the environmental criteria but you actually get a benefit, there's an indoor air quality benefit to getting rid of that altogether. And then you get a further bonus point if you are able to source stuff locally, which is also a really interesting thing because of course transportation becomes a big issue. And I pulled our first slide, uh, which is bamboo, because this is actually a house ground project and we use bamboo all the time because it's a great rapidly renewable hardwood floor. Yeah. The issue with it is there's a transportation cost uh, because it comes from China. That's right, and it is important when you're thinking about the environmental consideration of something to look at the, at, I was speaking about balance earlier, looking at transportation. So there's no point in getting something that's rapidly renewable if the cost of getting, if you have to put it on a, on a 747 to get it to, uh, to your building site because you're obviously putting so many uh, greenhouse gases into the, into the atmosphere as a result of transportation. Now, this is also gets more complicated because shipping something by, by boat uh, isn't actually all that um, environmentally invasive. But you will then have to be careful about where is the product coming from and what is the environmental standard of the, of the factory which yep. it's coming. So you can see that it's a very, very complex yep. consideration. And bamboo is a good example because there are now a lot of suppliers of bamboo and uh, you can actually get FSC rated bamboo. So you have to be careful and see where it's actually coming from and what type of conditions it's being created in. So we actually we're thinking, we've sort of thought about that in terms of bamboo and one thing we've been doing a lot of in terms of flooring uh, is concrete and that's the next slide that we've got and this is uh, from the house that we had as our Linebox Studio, Linebox studio House uh, as, our, as our case study a few weeks ago and a concrete floor is, is really good and it, uh, it gives you the solid surface, the hard surface, so you, but you also get the point for it being local because of course the concrete is always sourced locally uh, wherever you are. Um, there is some issues with this in terms of concrete, in terms of construction. It's, it's harder to do in a renovation because you have to engineer the structure to support the weight of the concrete. So the it. concrete is actually a, a couple of inches thick. Inch right? and a half. An inch yep. and a half thick. So you're not actually, it's not a structural floor. It's a, it's a it's floor a topping. That's, that's poured as a topping on top of a generally a, a wood floor structure, a conventional wood structure. But that actually has a fair bit of weight to it. You can imagine two inches of concrete. And so you have to make sure that you've designed the floor for that as well as making sure if you're building a new house, it's really the only way you can do it. Building a new house, making sure to accommodate in the overall organization that you've set your floor joists down an inch and a half 
so that the, the, uh, the, the level of the finished floor is actually the level of the Yeah, because you floor can have all sorts of issues with stairs, and you have to really, doors, you have, you have to work through it carefully. The other issue, of course, is heating. Um, hydronic heating is a common uh, thing to do in, uh, in concrete floors, which is where you run the, the tubes of hot water, which actually provide radiant heat. And so often in cold climates, you, it's really advisable to do the in-floor heating with the concrete. The thing that's nice about concrete is it's very durable. We've got another couple pictures. Uh, so in a kitchen, it can just be continuous right through the kitchen. It's great. You can also impact the finish and bring it up to a higher standard by polishing it. And uh, this actually is a, a, almost a mirror finish uh, with a polish and a sealer. You can do different things with the color of concrete. Yeah, I have to say that you have to also be prepared for concrete. Concrete is a construction material. It's not necessarily a finished material or not conventionally a finished material. I mean, if you're expecting a sort of flawless finish like you might get on a site finished hardwood floor or carpet, uh, even cork or marmoleum, you're just not going to get that. We have to talk about the cracks too because with concrete, concrete cracks, floor, it does. It's uh, the one thing we can write a written guarantee and send you <laughs> is that your concrete floor is going to crack. It's, it's part of the nature of the material. So if you're crack averse, uh, crack averse, that sounds, uh, yeah. you're averse to cracks, uh, concrete in is, concrete. in yeah. concrete, yeah, concrete is probably not your flooring material. It is rough and ready, but it is very durable, and it is also uh, very uh, favorably looked at by leads, so it's a, it's a very good product. Um, this is a, a variation of concrete. Terrazzo. We don't have this in Alberta because it's a, more of an artisan type of thing. But uh, again, this is a really good product because it is, uh, it's a poured product, but it also has recycled content. It has porcelain and glass in it that's ground up, and then it's bonded with an If you epoxy. went to a school that was built in, or a hospital, if you've been to a hospital that was built in the 60s, 70s, then you know what that floor is like. It usually has a white matrix or an off-color matrix, and then little bits of uh, well, ceramic and glass that's inside. It's a very, very durable long-term kind of modern finish and, and it is something that we just don't have here in Alberta because we don't have the, the craft trade process that can, can yeah. do this sort of thing. But we yeah, and I think we have a picture of them. Uh, so it, like that's, it looks almost like concrete when it's applied. There's that's the same right. sort of grid pattern. They put those little spacers in it. So, I mean, it does kind of look almost like tiled because they've got those spacers. You can change the size of the spacers. Those are expansion joints. And then you can also do a detail where you bring it up as your baseboard. Which is why it's so popular in commercial construction because you don't have that, you don't joint. have a cleaning joint problem. Yep. And you can pour stairs out of it there. This, this, if you didn't know what terrazzo looked like now, you probably, uh, it rings a bell because we've all gone up and down stairs that look like that. So that's also an option as a variation on concrete, on concrete. It's kind of light concrete. It's just got a little bit more, uh, more of a pattern in it and that actually can help reduce some of the sensitivity to, uh, to finishes. This is a higher quality finish. It is a higher quality finish. It's a bit more expensive per square foot, um, but it's, uh, it, it's got a real durability to it. But a lot of people don't like the hardness and coldness of concrete. And so then we've got another option, which is, which is really growing in popularity, which is cork. Yeah. And cork, I mean, cork is a harvested product. It comes from a cork tree. And uh, the cork, actually, the bark peels off of it. So the tree doesn't have to die uh, in order to harvest the product. So they peel it off, and they flatten it, and they make it into panels. And uh, the thing that's nice about this is it's very soft underfoot, and it, it, has, it, it has a warmth to it. Uh, unlike hardwood, which uh, has a sort of a, uh, is one of those in-between floorings that is a bit hard, um, this one is actually soft. It's actually soft to the touch, and it's, uh, if you're temperature averse, you don't like things cold on your feet, and you don't, wouldn't like tile, and you wouldn't like concrete, you'd probably like cork. The one thing that some people are surprised about with cork is it is a, a tiled product, like yes. it's a paneled product. So it comes in sheets and uh, it's not a rolled product, we're going to talk about that. It comes in panels and they can range in size from 12 to 24 to 36 inches. There is a bit of expansion and contraction with cork and uh, in our climate in Calgary where it's dry, uh, you do have it shrinking in the winter and then expanding in the summer. So there is a bit of seaming to it, so it moves, it's a living floor. Here we can see it here. It is actually very beautiful. It's, it's visually warm. It's warm to the touch. It's a, it's a very nice product. And, and reasonably priced. And the thing that's nice about it, too, is that, uh, you know, if, you, if your dog goes and scratches one of, it, one of them or you drop something on it, you can pop it out and replace it. It's not, it's not as uh, integrated uh, as, hardwood. As, as hardwood is. Yeah. And then the, the, and this is the last, the last version of it. And then the last product is uh, Marmoleon, which is a linseed-based product. It's basically like a, a rolled floor. 
And that's a sheet good. So that comes in big rolls like carpet. So, and it's seamed together, they actually weld it. They call it welding, but they take a heat uh, gun and they put sort of an epoxy between the sheets in the same color and they melt it together. And this is something that, again, has a bit of warmth to it, a bit of softness. And it would be a good product if people don't like the idea of their flooring being paneled like, like, uh, like, like the cork. Uh, the one thing that some people have said is that it is a little commercial. Yes. It's a very common product uh, commercially. Like you see it a lot in schools, hospitals, like yeah, other types of things. Places that used to have terrazzo now have marmoleum. Yeah, but there are a lot of marmoleums that have come out. Forbo's come out with a whole bunch of stuff uh, in Armstrong that is that they're actually more residential looking. They actually they look like uh, we, there's some that have a bit of a wood grain sort of appearance to them, so they don't look as sort of commercial or industrial as what they used to. They come in a great range of colors. Yeah. Well, I hope that helps, Kelly, uh, and that you're going to have some more options. Again, you need to look and see what's actually going on in Nanaimo, yeah. what's available, and, uh, and make, try and make as balanced a choice as you can. So that wraps it up for today. Yeah. Tomorrow, we're going to have a conversation with Frances GF, a, a longtime viewer of Slow Home. We're going to be helping her with her house in Halifax, Nova Scotia, in our Saturday design project. So see you then. See you then.